of go over asterisk and Linux um, and kind of show how asterisk has, has a modular architecture similar to Linux kernel modules. Uh, we'll discuss what channels are in asterisk and the interfaces within asterisk, be it the APIs or the command line interface, and the config file syntax for asterisk. So, what does asterisk run on? It runs on Linux. It runs on Unix. You can run it on Solaris if you wish. You can run it on uh, OS X, on a Mac. You can run it on Windows using SIGWIN. Or I've even seen people run it on Windows using, what, what do they call that? The, the Linux personality for Windows or Linux something for Windows where you have a subsystem and it actually runs pretty good on that. Um, of course, you are running a full version of, say, Ubuntu or something, or CentOS, but it will run uh, under Windows. Should you run it under Windows? No. <laughs> not in production. Maybe if you want to test something, sure, why not? Uh, BSDs supported, well, it runs under BSD. It's not recommended. It's recommended to stick with one of the, the big Linux distros, mainly because that's what it's tested on. That's where, uh, if you have a problem, you can go to the forums and people are running it on CentOS or Ubuntu. Um, it's probably better to stick with the big ones. So, asterisk itself is, is, is modular by design. There, there's what they call a simple core. I would say, it, the core is really not all that simple if you look at the source code, but, but the core does just a few things, like knows how to load modules, knows how to read config files, and those type of things. Um, and without a module loaded, it really doesn't do anything. So it can't even dial a phone without the uh, app dial application. So you, you would load these modules to provide the functionality that re that's required to um, build your solution. You don't necessarily have to load every module that comes with Asterisk. And as a matter of fact, you probably shouldn't. If you're not using Chan Skinny for Cisco phones, don't load that module. It's just got an open port that could be vulnerable to some type of attack. Just make sure you don't load those modules. but these are all the modules I currently have loaded on this server I have up here. Um, you'll note there are 310 modules loaded. And they do different things, like this is a timer module that's used for timing within asterisk. Um, what I did there is I did a module show like SO, which all of them are shared objects, so it's going to show every one of the uh, modules. I can do uh, modules show like um, stu, show like eeks. And there is only one module for chan eeks. It shows a little bit about the version, a little description of the module. So what, what's the core functions of asterisk? It, it, in the core, it does the module management. I guess this. Uh, it can read configuration files. It provides system timing to all the applications as well as the, the say, T1 cards and chan channel drivers like SIP. And it does channel management. So module files. Uh, are, like I said earlier, are, are Linux shared objects. Uh, they are st normally stored in the user lib asterisk modules directory. When you build asterisk and install asterisk, that's where it will fit it by default. 
It doesn't have to go there. You can change that within the uh, asterisk.comp file. Let's go look at that real quick. Not in the command line. So if you look here, this is where all of the different directories are defined within asterisk. This is the asterisk.comp file, which is kind of like the main file for asterisk. Um, you can change where the different sounds are stored or the modules or the logs are stored and that kind of thing within this file. You can also set other options like, uh, you know, your default verbosity and debug levels. We'll go over what those do later on. Um, anything else interested in, in here? There's, there's quite a bit of settings in here. It's a good read, actually, um, and you should probably tweak it for your deployment. Um, the module files are version dependent. So if you have Asterisk 1.4 out there running and then you try to upgrade to Asterisk 16, those modules for 1.4 are not going to load. You're going to get a message like this saying, these are not, were not built for this version of Asterisk and they will not work correctly. And as a matter of fact, it'll usually crash Asterisk if you do that. So the configuration files. Um, The module configuration file, this is a specific configuration file, and we'll go look at that here in a second. There's some uh, directives that can be used within the configuration file for the modules. You can do auto load. And when you use that directive, that says load everything in the modules directory when I start asterisk. Any uh, .so, just go ahead and load it. Um, there's a preload which uh, will load individual modules before the asterisk core has been initialized. And, and this is usually uh, done when you have some modules that need to be loaded before other things, like maybe the ODBC module because you're storing the rest of your configuration files in the database. So it needs to load ODBC before it can load the rest of the configuration. Um, and that's called real time, by the way, if, if you want to store your your information in the uh, in a SQL database. There's a require. What that says is load this module. If it, if it does not load, then uh, don't start asterisk. It's an integral part of my system. And if it's not loading, then I just don't even want it to start because the calls are going to be failing for some reason. And then there's the preload require, which is kind of a combination of preload and require. Then we have a no load. What you could do is you could do the auto load, say load everything in that modules directory, and then you can do no load. So it would be everything in that modules directory except these files. So you can do a no load on, say, the Chansky or no load on Meet Me or some other um, module. Let's go look at that file real quick. So I currently have it set to auto load, and I have a few that I'm no loading. And let's, let's no load at playback, which plays back a sound file. All right. So I'll dial. You'll notice that it did playback, even though I had no load. That's fine, because I didn't uh, restart it. So let's do a restart. Now let's try that again. And you'll see it did not play the sound file. In fact, it says there is no application playback, because I no loaded that module. Thank you. 
Let's get that real quick. And we should be able to play back a file now. Hello, world. And it's working again. Any questions with modules? Y'all good? Um, you can write your own module. Uh, there's a skeleton of uh, a C file that that's, you can use to base your own module out of, and a lot of people write their own modules to go out and do certain things, maybe connect to a proprietary database, or maybe go out and hit some web service or something like that. People do that quite a bit. You could also use the APIs to do that as well. The, and it's probably a little cleaner to use the APIs rather than writing a C module to do some of these things. But there, there are reasons to write your own modules. Um, let's look at some CLI commands. Um, we did the, the module show earlier, which you can show everything or you can show certain ones that match a pattern. Um, you can do a module load. I'll do that real quick. Now, let's do a module unload. We'll unload at bow. So now we'll try to dial a number. Look at that, it did. Well, it did because it didn't call app dial, it called app playback. Me dialing into the system does not call app dial. If I try to dial from one phone to the other, and there's a warning there, there's no application dial, so it cannot dial between, dial into another phone. Reload it and try again. And it does not work. So you can no load them from the modules.conf file or you can do it directly from the CLI. Note that if you restart asterisk, it'll still look at the module.conf file. So if you unload that dial in the CLI and restart asterisk, it will load it back if you didn't do a no load in the modules.com file. Um, there is a module reload which says go reload this module and it'll go reread its configuration file, um, say um, app queue or something like that. You can do a module reload app queue and it will reread the uh, queues.com configuration file. Maybe you've added new queues or new queue members or something like that and you want it to refresh it. That's how you would do that. Channels. Um, what is a channel? It's essentially just a pathway in and out of asterisk. Um, they are done using channel drivers. So here are some samples of different channel drivers. We have the SIP channel driver, the PJ SIP channel driver, the EX channel driver, IAX, EX, um, and the DOTI channel driver, which is the channel driver that does the hardware, um, that provides the interface into the hardware cards, be it a T1 or analog. Um, so for most normal phone calls, there are two channels up at all times. So when you dial one phone to another, there's a channel in the asterisk and another channel out of asterisk to the other phone. We can see that actually. And we'll see that we actually have two channels that are up right there, one coming into asterisk, then one 
going out of asterisk to the other phone. Hang that up. And now we don't have any channels active. To uh, configure a channel driver, there's um, each of the different channel drivers have configuration files of their own. Um, note here that most of them, chancyup has a zip.com, champjzip has a pjzip.com. The uh, anomaly here in the naming scheme is the chan.e has a chan.e.com. And my guess is that's because that was the first channel driver that was built was wasn't Dottie at the time, it was, it was that tail, but that got renamed to Dottie. And I, I think they just changed the naming standard after that. All of these uh, configuration files are normally stored in ANSI asterisk. You can change that, but really no reason to. Um, what other interfaces we have? We have we've seen the configuration files. We've seen the uh, asterisk command line interface where we were doing the the uh, different unload and reload of the modules, um, and actually looking at the uh, channels and that's the CLI, the asterisk CLI. Um, then we have the other APIs. We have the asterisk gateway interface, which is essentially a Within the context of a phone call, it's a dial plan application that will, that will call another external application to do something. And once that application is finished, it will continue on its call. A lot of times that's done to do a database lookup or something along those lines within the context of a call. Then we have the asterisk manager interface, which really is more of a top-down look at asterisk. And you can see everything going on within asterisk. You can query it. Asterisk can say, show me all the channels that are currently up. You can redirect channels using the uh, manager interface. Um, you can turn on and off recording. Um, you can kick people from conference bridges. There's all sorts of stuff you can do with the manager interface. And then we have the RESTful interface, and it's, it's the newest API out there. And it's really uh, designed to build asterisk applications that were normally written in, in C as an asterisk module. With the uh, RESTful interface, you can build it externally from Asterisk and, and actually uh, builds things like a, a conference bridge or something along those lines in the language of your choice. Um, it is a RESTful interface. Um, there are kind of like two streams. There's one that's a WebSocket that's sending you events nonstop. Then there's the RESTful side where you issue commands and get responses back from it. Uh, the RESTful interface is more, it, it's not like, not about calling the app voicemail application from an external uh, application. It's more of writing the, the voicemail application in an ex external um, language outside of asterisk. Um, I do have a presentation on writing uh, ARI applications. Um, on the slim chance that we have time at the end of this uh, session, I, the last session, I'll kind of run through that one real quick. I think it's a pretty good little presentation. Um, and today, there is a session on uh, public APIs for asterisk using Kong. Anybody familiar with that? I'm not. <laughs> Wish I could sit in on it, but I will be doing another session here. Um, Thursday, there is a ARI um, presentation that you might be interested in. That's at noon. You'll have to look up where it is. I'm not sure which room it's in. So the configuration file basics, uh, most of them have a uh, key value pair. They'll have a heading section, and underneath that will be a, a bunch of key value pairs. Um, you can have comments in the config files, semicolon is the uh, start of the line comment. You can do a multi-line comment using semicolon dash dash and ending it with dash dash semicolon. Okay. We have kind of gone through Asterisk and Linux, the modular architecture, what channels are, and the various interfaces and config file syntax. 
That brings us to 11.30. And I think we can take a quick three-minute break.